Hey, Jay, this is Will from Georgia. I just got done listening to uh, your podcast about what was happening in Kansas and all that kind of stuff. And then I heard the voicemail at the end. I was talking about the draft Bernie movement. Um, the first time I ever heard of that, I had assumed that it was about drafting Bernie to become the next president or to run for president again. And uh, uh, I was the, the position that uh, the person who left the voicemail was, you know, a bit more reasonable than I had thought. Um, but I'm still very skeptical about it because I am generally skeptical about third parties, um, especially given, you know, the history of the United States. But I did want to call to address a um, a thing that I hear a lot when people do talk about third parties, and that is the uh, formation of the Republican Party as an example of a successful third party gaining power and rising to national prominence. Um, the Republican Party, I would argue is not necessarily like a one of those like what we envision of a third party you know like a scrappy third party that comes in and takes over it was <clears throat> it was a deliberate formation of a couple different parties that had formed namely the free soilers and also uh the whigs who were the establishment second party who got together in order to fight an actual scrappy third party through the no not uh being the no nothings um and so as a result of, you know, uh, you can check my facts a little bit, but I'm pretty sure that that's how it went, was that the uh, the Whig Party gave their um, their party infrastructure to basically the Free Soilers and a couple other constituencies and abolitionists within uh, Northern interests and then formed the Republican Party. Um, and that required a huge power vacuum. The Whigs had completely fallen apart by 1854 when the Republican Party formed. Um, and I just don't think that we're necessarily in that kind of power vacuum where um, we have a, a super powerful party and then a party that is utterly and totally inept. The Democrats are in a bad place, but I don't think that they are in a place that the Whigs were in 1854. But those are just my thoughts. Um, if anybody has something, else that they would like to say to counter that, that'd be pretty cool. Um, I'm perfectly willing to reassess my opinion. Love the show. Thanks.